Welcome to another water drop where we'll be setting up a simple water quality model and looking at some of the necessary considerations in InfoWorks ICM. So who's this for? Uh, really I could only come up with one uh, group here, so just modelers needing to understand how uh, water quality simulations get set up typically. Uh, these are both for point source and non-point source as well as two-dimensional uh, water quality models. Uh, we're first going to look at some of the uh, components that make up a point source uh, simulation and set up that simulation uh, to run uh, and then also view those results. Uh, next, we'll look at some of the non-point source uh, methods, the build-up and wash-off models, uh, as well as looking at uh, 2D, a 2D sediment model, as well as some other options for two-dimensional water quality modeling. So starting off, we're going to be looking at a one-dimensional point source uh, type of water quality analyses. Uh, really, the two main components we need here uh, is some sort of inflow, uh, file there, uh, and then that's going to be associated with, of course, the name of a node in the network. Along with that, we also need a pollutograph. Uh, so this is just defining the concentration of the different constituents. Uh, lots of different options down here for modeling nitrogen or phosphorus sediment. Um, I've also got BOD set up into here, uh, silicon. Um, in the help menu, there is a lot of information on what exactly all these things are um, and also provides you with a, a lot more information on um, different setups for uh, water quality models. Um, you can also set up the uh, water quality in the wastewater profile so you can have uh, things associated with the uh, w water coming in from a wastewater profile. And as you can see, um, again, being dissolved or um, on some sort of fraction of the, um, of the um, sediment fraction there. Um, one important note, uh, BOD is, uh, um, or hydrogen sulfide is reliant on BOD. Um, so in order to model hydrogen sulfide in the system, uh, you will need more, uh, you will need to, uh, to model the BOD as well. And more information on that can be found in the help menu. So looking at one of the runs that we have set up, um, this is the, di the run dialog where you can see I've had my inflow in there, I've got my pollutograph in there, and then key to this is use QM. That, that's going to allow us to run a water quality simulation and if I open this up, um, I've got these other boxes ticked, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but just making sure that whatever you do want to uh, model in that pollutograph that you have there uh, to make sure that it's ticked on there as well. So once you do run the simulations, um, relatively quick process uh, being able to do that. I've already got one uh, set up here though. Um, so I am going to zoom to that uh, node that we uh, have that pollutograph on, whoops, got a space in there, um, to look at some of the results from our um, our model. So you've got the um, dissolved BOD on there as well as uh, the sediment fractions. I can look at the sediment going through, coming from that system. Um, I can also kind of zoom out and then uh, look to more of the downstream areas. Uh, and what kind of sediment is going through uh, those spaces as well, how it uh, eventually kind of trickles down into uh, different parts of the network uh, and different parts of the model. So taking a look at some of the non-point source related uh, water quality modeling information, I'll that data is going to be contained within the subcatchment information where you can see down here at the bottom the build up and wash off uh, land use is there. Uh, you can also find more information uh, within the subcatchments tab uh, or the subcatchment table I should say under the uh, build up and wash off land use tab there. Uh, for the demo here I'm just going to make a dummy land use. Uh, we've got these sweep intervals and sweep removals. Um, those can be used um, if you're using the swim methodology for build up wash off. There are uh, two different types um, of um, build up wash off models, one being the Innovise and one being the uh, swim. 
Uh, if I open up the properties here, I can see uh, those determinants in here uh, for the different uh, build-up types, uh, max maximum build-up. Um, I've also got um, a similar dialog for wash-off of the different determinants and uh, what kinds of uh, methodology or efficiency they might have. So here we have a two-dimensional model. Uh, we're, we're modeling some sediment um, in this area of the 2D mesh. Um, you'll notice first I have an initial condition sediment area. Not a whole lot of information here, really just defining the area that it is. The real key to this is being able to include an initial conditions uh, model object that will eventually be used in the run. Um, you can see I have this one set up for uh, the 2D zone, naming that, um, that initial condition uh, object that I have in here, the same as my initial condition um, uh, zone ID here to kind of match those up together. Um, the zone type being a sediment, um, there are other options for modeling water quality, uh, and then some other uh, various um, specifications over here to define uh, which layer, uh, in this case for the sediment, uh, what type of uh, layer it is, um, what kind of composition it has, the depth, uh, etc. Uh, like I mentioned, since I've already used that one to run, it is a read-only, uh, but we do have the option for uh, general, more general water quality, where you can uh, uh, model the dissolved uh, constituents as well as things uh, attached to uh, either one of the uh, sediment um, sediment fractions, uh, SF1 or SF2. Uh, other considerations in here, looking at one of the runs uh, that I have set up, uh, of course we need the, to use the QM just like any other water quality, uh, and then have uh, everything else set up here as well. There's some different options for uh, whether the erosion and deposition will affect things, um, model 2D uh, bed load as well as erosion deposition options in there. You can see I have that initial condition there along with an inflow file. I've just got some inflows going into this area. Taking a look at the run in this case, I do have a uh, simulation already uh, completed here uh, where I do have this line, uh, results line drawn across. Uh, if I click on uh, that, um, as you see, that's the, just the name. Um, I want to pull up a graphical uh, type of view for this and then just graphing the highest concentration of that S SF1, which is the only uh, constituent I was modeling. If I pull that up, then I can see that highest concentration over the course of the uh, simulation. Um, along with the setup that will go into uh, the initial conditions and everything, you'll also need to set up the water quality parameters. So up in model, model parameters, and water quality and sediment parameters, uh, there is a, a wide variety of different uh, inputs and things like that that will be uh, needed in order for things to be run, um, whether it's associated with the erosion deposition model or bed load model. There's also some things in here for uh, one-dimensional uh, modeling um, and then some different inputs depending on these different types of uh, bed load forms and uh, modeling uh, approaches for sediment and deposition, sediment erosion deposition. Uh, these can be uh, tweaked in here to the appropriate values. So finally wrapping things up here, uh, like I mentioned through the video, there are some good resources in the help menu uh, to be able to understand uh, what the different parameters are and methodologies that get used in the water quality simulations. Of course, as always, reach out with any problems or issues that you might run into. Over here on the right is pictured uh, a book that I have um, seen as a reference for um, some more of the sediment and erosion uh, types of modeling. Um, I know I, I know some stuff about soils, but uh, once you get down into those different methods, it can be difficult to understand what the uh, appropriate parameters should be, uh, what the different methodologies might be uh, better suited for. Um, and so this is a book uh, that could be used as a good reference for uh, understanding that a bit better if that's of, uh, of significant interest.